Welcome everybody to Sandwich Johnson with Helping the Good People. I'm going to do an interview here with Mr. John Holiday with One Heartbeat. And his son, Mario, is going to sit in the background for comedy hour. Anyway. <laughs> I told him to get his butt back out here. Oh yeah, I thought about that. <laughs> Isn't this cool? Look at that. Hi. I'm, I'm tall right now until I sit down. Right. We're, here, hold that. We're basically, this came out of the... Sonoran Desert, where I was born, I found this out there in a desert years back, out by uh, the Catback Mountain. Ooh, that's an interesting and name. It's a beautiful. <laughs> isn't you gonna take my seat, huh? Yeah. yeah Mario there, is now so. taking Amber's seat. I'm sitting seat. there because I gotta talk to your dad. Yeah. So you can move in another spot. You can sit in my comfy little roller seat. But that's all right because at least he got into the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so now you saw Mario. <laughs> you are now in the forbidden zone. He's fixing to get questions. This is the between 14th and 15th forbidden zone, but it's a very beautiful area, actually. It has a lot of powerful uh, energy, but it's <coughs> it's 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 been, you know, unfortunately given a notorious tag, but it's on the way up. Hey, okay. cool. And now. <laughs> For today's positive vibes <laughs> from the one heartbeat, and we lest we never forget that it was uh, Black Man Clay, Krista Keller, people like that, Carol Gutierrez, Paul Steppen, people along the way, Zebo Miller, they never gave up on the thing, and now it's going into like you know the fourth of decade, and uh, we're doing the drumming at the park. And uh, we're just working on a positive vibe for Tucson. And uh, we're always like, you know, we seem to find things that other people don't think are valuable and we manage to make them valuable. All right. We... Hey, I get where you're going, John. But uh, <laughs> I want to get this party rolling. Okay. You ready to answer some questions and talk to the people now? Yeah, I was trying to avoid the questions <laughs> from the commentator, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah. And John's world. This is what we do all day, man. I come over here with my arts and stuff. <laughs> I like his sign back here. The black man clay. When I lean over, you can uh, show him. John. Here it is, right here. He made that himself. So, first of all, I want I want to clarify some things. John and I have been friends for how long now? Almost almost two years. And uh, everyone is in the assumption that we're in a relationship. So I wanted to start off the whole thing with John. So how did we meet? <laughs> I think it was down at the hut. Uh-huh. And uh, you, you were taking pictures and you were getting some uh, therapy to, speak up. to filming stuff. And then she came to the peace fair and filmed us over there at uh, Armory Park <laughs> and but said, hey, this, this, you know, this is a good, this is a good thing. You're on the same wavelength, we're all different kinds of music and then I, I, I found out she was new like every, you know, like half of the band members in Tucson <laughs> and all the music, so I'm like, wow, this is uh, muy interesante. <laughs> this is an interesting thing to know, you know, so, and then I found out we're both Libras and, uh, have a little bit of the uh, Libra power, yes, <laughs> and the flowing wells roots. So that's even crazier. Yeah. So it's quite synchronistic. So yes, she is my friend. <laughs> did you grow up here? Yes, I did. I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. I I grew up on the corner of Prince and Flowing Wells, and we had an orchard, and cows, and goats, and everything. And now you look at it, you would never know. They, as my brother David would say. That's not progress, that's just change. <laughs> Can you believe, guys, that this guy right here, and the reason why he is looking the way he does is because he does a lot of dance and a lot of moving around and a lot of, like, doing things. You know, just move, move, move. High metabolism, high energy, just always positive and on the upbeat. And you can tell when he's down. But can you believe that he is 30 years older than me? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, this guy's got some energy, he's got some stories, and he's very, very interesting. Well, so, 
I can believe it. <laughs> yeah, well, he takes a lot of vitamins. He moves, 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 and that's what's cool about it. And that's why we click so much and why we hang out so much because we both have that high energy. And in a way, as he's doing stuff, I'm talking and the opposite. We trade spaces back and forth. And that is a honest communication. That's open communication you need in relationships. It don't matter if it's friendships, coworkers, business. It don't matter. You got to have open communication. That's right, because if Amber does agree with something and I'm acting a little weird, she's going to call me on it immediately. <laughs> In good ways. In a good way, but it's like, yeah, it's like, I, <laughs> it's not a misunderstanding where she's coming from. Yeah. Honesty, which is kind of important nowadays because everybody speaks in circles. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah, it's like. It's just, like the question behind the question that yeah. goes around the question to avoid the question yeah. like you were just Let's, doing. <laughs> how about we get to the point? And it's always better, you know, and if, 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 you, Truth. if you don't like something. You might have to say it, even though you may offend someone. But and you, you don't or, do it intentionally. Or you could even say when they want you to do something or whatever, go, I'll think about it. I learned that from Amber's uh, <laughs> video. Because I'm always trying to say, well, maybe call me tomorrow or something. Or I don't take text or something. That way, you know, they might have to wait a little while. Wow. Because I don't like it when somebody, like, tries to make, hey, you, you want to do it, blah, blah, blah. It's like... <laughs> Well, first, I'm a Libra, so it takes me a while to make my mind up. Secondly, I don't like to be put in the corner, you know what I mean? Just show me the money. Yeah. I don't want to go on this long <coughs> journey, you know, to fatten, you know, uh, frogs for snakes to eat. Well, now that you say that, I want to get on to the next question, which is, I'm curious to know, what was one of uh, the memories that you had that played a turning point in your life? Say, like, you were going down a dark road or whatever and someone crossed your path or they helped you in some way that stuck with you for the rest of your life that turned your life around. Wow. I'm really curious to know if you have a memory in there. And I'll give you a moment to think about it while I go refill my coffee. Well, I kind of have a memory, like, when I... Uh, go I'll, refill my coffee. Let when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Go ahead. I'm I almost, listening. Uh, I can hear you. died from asthma. In those days, there was no, like, ambulance coming out, so we parents put me in the truck and drove me over there to TMC, all the way to TMC. Uh -huh. And uh, I was laying on the floor of the truck and I couldn't breathe. And I asked my mom, I said, Mom, am I going to die? And she says, no, son, you're not. I love you. You're going to be fine. She rubbed me on the head and, you know, I basically couldn't breathe. I was like hallucinating. And I got to the hospital and put me in an oxygen tent. I survived. And my brothers, who were notoriously stingy, I got five of them, wouldn't let me touch any of their toys or nothing. They actually gave me toys. Said, hey, you know, you can you can play with this toy, or I'm even going to give you this toy since you're in the hospital. And, you know, it kind of reiterated that in spite of, the, uh, you know, our having five brothers and our bar barbarian lifestyle. Five that, brothers? That my brothers... What? Loved me. So it was six boys. My mom had six boys and my dad to deal with. You know? Where are you from? I mean, well, no, no, I didn't mean it like that. But like, so your family, like, were they really close? Did you have, you know, a huge family with multiple cousins? I have a monstrous family. They're not as close as they should be, but uh, I got people from all over the place. And I got family in Utah, Chihuahua. What's your spirituality? Safford, Pima, Thatcher, uh, Idaho. Which All, is, what's the spirituality base like? Do you have a religion that you follow, or no? I don't. I, nothing. I'm a Christian, okay. but I also I accept good things from any religion, and I don't judge any religion. But I believe in, uh, you know, I think Christ's principles of love thy neighbor and forgiving people is a stupendous concept. It's really hard to live. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's it's hard to beat. And, you know, most religions or philosophies or spirits, whether it's Native American, wherever, always have some common thing where everybody, you know, it's a spirit of love that's like overpowering and that if you, you know, are in a really bad place, like you're locked up or somewhere where you have no other way out, even if you're trapped under a beam or something, sometimes if you pray, somehow, some magical or powerful spirit, Miracle. miraculous spirit, I believe in miracles. It happens. And I've experienced it myself. So, I, you know, 
I, I, I think everybody should try to connect with some kind of spiritual uh, force in their life. And a lot of people, well, they don't have that, or they don't believe in anything. Or they just don't have a mentor, uh, someone to guide them, or to tell them what's good and what's bad. They just have to figure it out. And that was kind of my lifestyle growing up on the streets here in Tucson since 85 as a runaway. You know, you have to rely on that. You have to rely on that source and seek your soul tribe and your family as best you can. And that's what leads me to the next one I really want to know is who's your mentor? If you had to choose someone that you looked up to that kind of helped you. Well, my first mentor, of course, was my dad because right. he was a fanatical workaholic individual that taught me, a, you know, the work ethic and how to survive because, you know, it's like he had us out in the hot sun and we had to feed animals and the whole works and it was like it was good for us. And then after my dad passed away, Basically, it was strange. That's when I met, right around that time, I met Black Man Clay. And he was kind of like, uh, you know, took my dad's place because he was also, you know, a guy that worked at least 12 or 13 hours a day. <laughs> and then went out and partied. <laughs> and, you know, and said, you know, I'll... a lot of love to I brought a lot of love. He helped people out all the time. <laughs> he'd lend them money. He'd fix stuff for them. He'd lend them a car. He'd... And then... He would show up at everything and just bring a huge amount of energy. And when a band, you know, like Neon Prophet or something is playing, the clay would show up and bring, you know, and, and uh, 25 more people are coming with him, you know. <laughs> he had that kind of charisma and that kind of uh, joy. And uh, that's when we all got together and my brother David and I met him. And then we all started uh, about in like about 1978, 79, 80. In that, right in that period, we all met at the park with. Krista Keller, Zebo, all kinds of people, and we decided to start the One Heartbeat. Can I ask you a question? I saw one of his videos of him sitting in the orange chair. It was like a lounge, a rocking chair or something that pulled back, and he was talking about his definition of One Heartbeat and how it is to him. Do you remember him explaining you any ways of like for him on how it got created, what it was about, yes. the cycle? Well, yeah, he always believed. That's why he said in the one, it's the spirit of the one. It's like in the reggae, he was influenced by Bob Marley too, but also and Christianity growing up in the church, whatever he, wherever he grew up in San Antonio, Texas. So he believed that God was the one or but whatever you want to call it. And source, the source. And we're all in the <coughs> one. And, you know, he was a very like inclusive person. So, like, when he went in the military, he ended up being the guy help, helping to integrate in the Air Force and stuff because he was, like, that type of person. And I saw that, and, I, you know, that's kind of the way my dad taught me. My dad was in the military. He's like, you know, it doesn't matter what race you are. Uh, you can all work together, and you can accomplish things, and it's a beautiful thing. And Black Man Clay was like, that was his whole thing. Is like, no matter where you come from, no matter where you've been, no matter what you look like, you could join right in. Ah, I love that. One heartbeat. And he always said, one beat at a time. It's like, if you go to do something and it's a monumental task, you know, you're going to have to do it one shovel at a time or one load at a time or one whatever you got to do. But it's the starting point. But if you have, you know, a rhythm to it, he always put a rhythm to everything. When he worked, he would like, I seen him do an acre of weeds with a hula hoop. You know what I'm thinking of right now that just came to my mind, and before I forget it is, the, what comes to my mind is, like people are so busy chasing time when time really doesn't exist. Because you're in the now, you're in the moment. That's right. And, and it, you have to accept every moment and every person for that moment. No matter where they come from or how crazy they are. That's right. You, you, you still have to deal with it, you know? Yeah. And it can be... It's all one. Yeah. And it can be, like, extremely frustrating when you love someone and they're at a point where they're only into, you know, their own self-interest or whatever or, like, control of people like we were talking about. Manipulators. Manipulators. And they want a group of people, but they want a group of people to serve them. And that's 
the exact that opposite. That's not our aisle. That's not up our alley at no, all. No, <laughs> and Black Man Clay never. He served others. He never worried about, you know. He'd get paid money and he'd get us all kind of gigs and he would say, I'm not keeping none of this money. I don't need it. And he'd pull out a wad of money and, and divide it up to the whole band. Mm. You know, we'd say, well, you know, that's a lot of money you're carrying. And he'd always say, well, my dad always said it's always good to have a good roll of bills in your pocket. But he would call the whole band together and say, you know what? I'm, I don't want any of the money from these gigs. And he got us gigs with La Frontera, with schools, all kinds of stuff. It didn't really matter. How long now about? 30 plus years? Yes, a little over 30 years. 30 years, one heartbeat. Yeah. Like when we started the group at Reed Park, you know, I put one heartbeat. But for me at the time, when we were sad and we were alone uh, right after the lockdown, I'm not kidding, that weekend we were at the Reed Park. And I told them we have a place to play music. And we went back every single week. And it's flourished into something beautiful even over this last year. But it's still still part of that John is one heartbeat guys so when I say sacred Sunday circles with one heartbeat I'm referring to John because I only know one heartbeat through him I never met black man clay but I've heard so many stories and heard him speak and he just touched my heart so I like to think that we're still carrying on that tradition at Reed Park every week and we're going to continue to do that too as he's become one of my mentors too John playing music now, I'm, we can jump into another video later as far as continuing on with another interview, but I wanted to just go ahead and end this two ways. One last question, and okay. then I want you to play us a song. Okay. Play me a song. All right, what, what question is that? <laughs> Come on, John. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you could say one thing to encourage someone, what would that one thing be right now in this moment? Don't think, just preach. I would say, don't allow discouragement or fear or negative thoughts, you know, sweep them out of your life. Don't, you know, when you're feeling down, and we all have that, where that voice is speaking to us, ah, it's not worth it, people are this or that, always go say, no, there's a positive side and there's something better waiting right around the corner. Never give up. As Pato Banta said, never give up and never give in. And, uh, you know, that's basically my uh, thing. There's always, the moment is beautiful. Always enjoy the moment. And then there's always something next happening. There's always going to be something interesting and fun. And look for people around you that are positive. You know, find out the people that actually would say something good to you and say, what are you doing good today? Or I like what you did. <laughs> and then you could say that to somebody else, and guess what? It passes all the way around the world. Say a good thought, a good thing. Black man Clay, you could not get him. People tried to gossip, you could not get him to say a bad word. <laughs> somebody did something stupid, he lent people money, and then he was mad, he'd, you know what he'd say? Well, I guess they just took a different path. <laughs> You know what? I just said that in my other video that I just did, actually, about that. About how I love you haters. And, and not only that, the <laughs> more you hate, the more love I give. It just, it fuels my fire, my passion, my creativity. And I'll tell you what, this man right here has kept me freaking sane. And I know I've kept him sane. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, we've walked these streets being gossiped and talked shit about so much because of COVID. God forbid we were walking down the street. Hey, but you know what? He found one of these, or a new one, somewhere. Yes. At, uh, what was it? Chicago, Chicago store. store, right in downtown. They said, we are not closing. And John went back and bought a condo. He found a beautiful and job. And I'll tell you what, he's going to play us and, a song. And, and you've I seen it grateful. in a lot of videos. And Grateful uh, to have him as a friend, man. And, and, and. We're friends. Right. And, and we're, <laughs> you know, we'll be seeing you in a lot of places this weekend. You know that. So, we will see you later. And I'm gonna Sunday. Play, I'm going to play a little yeah, bit because Sunday, the last Monday. time I just put out that video on one heartbeat of when I was in front of the trailer that Amber took of, of and uh, yeah I saw that that was like original yeah it was original <laughs> the, back in the day from, when we first started. from the Laguna Street Posse it's
the ending of Oye Como Va. <coughs> and I can tell you right now, you like what you hear, you see, whatever, like, subscribe, and share to the channel. Um, also, you'll see us on Sundays at Reed Park, anywhere from 11 to 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock p.m., I guess. And the reason I'm wearing this Marana football shirt is my son James plays fo football at Marana. Yeah. So I'm giving a shout out to them. Go James. And you know that's <laughs> hey, on. A, what about your little girl? On a personal night, and I just and Lily. You had your girl dance. Yes. Aww. And I went to the father daughter dance with Lily, and it's her last one, and it was great. And she's been to the and James. They've both been to the sacred <laughs> Sunday circles and enjoyed themselves at Reed Park. And everybody remember that's a space we need to save for Tucson. Oh yeah, and go online and check out Save the Heart of Reed Park. Yes. Manon, uh, Philip. Jo How do you say her last name? Jose I think you did, did a pretty good job. Yeah, well, look up SaveTheHeartOfReadPark.org. Sign the petition, donate to the uh, fund for the cause for lawyers to help put a stop to the destruction of Reed Park. And also do the survey, which is much needed because we got to oppose this and uh, put a stop to it or else they will cut down and plow out our whole entire Reed Park and all the wildlife in it. And we're not going to let that happen. A piece of Tucson's history that is irreplaceable. We have helping the good people. We have sacred Sunday circles. <laughs> we have one heartbeat. We have Santa Pachita. That's right. We got freaking everybody in Tucson. Yes. The Rosano brothers. A Who bunch of people showed up to support and did a great job. The destruction of our beautiful park that is a sanctuary. It needs to be kept that way. Stay tuned for more for our second interview. This is Amber Johnson and John Holliday with One Heartbeat. God bless. Thank you.